Hey y'all, so this is my third video and in this video we are going to talk about how to create a dynamic matrix. Basically you use a for loop to create a matrix. Um, we are going to talk about indexing, negative indexing, and we also might talk about changing or adding elements within a list or a matrix. And I would like to preface this video by explaining that when we are indexing um, a matrix or a list, um, when we refer to zero, that is going to be indexing the first row. So if you, um, or a column, if you would like to change um, an element within the first row or first column, um, we're going to be using zero, and from there it goes zero, one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. So I just wanted to let everyone know that um, that's how Python does indexing, you're not going to use one as the first row. One is going to be the second row um, in Python. So uh, let's get started. So first when you're creating a dynamic matrix, you want to set the number of rows um, and name a variable for that. So we're going to say n equals three. So we want to have three rows. m is going to equal four and we're going to use that to set the number of elements in each row of our matrix. Um, and we also need to define our matrix before we use the for loop. So we need to say A equals, we're going to use zeros so uh, to start off in each row. So we're going to say 0 times N, which is the number of rows. I'm just going to comment here. Um, number of elements per row, or you could also say uh, number of columns. And again, A is the name of our matrix. So next, you want to create a for loop. Um, we want to say for I in range. And our range is going to be the number of rows. Um, I'm going to explain more about that in a second here. Um, and then you want to put a colon. So we're going to say A bracket I equals, let's still use zeros, uh, zero times M. And we're going to put print so that we can see the matrix that we created. Um, so again, like I said, um, in indexing, with indexing in Python, we're going to start at zero. So um, in this for loop, it's going to go zero, one, two, and then stop at three. So first it's going to um, define the first row, but it's going to be using zero. So it goes A bracket zero equals zero times four. So it's going to put four zeros in row one. Then it's going to uh, go to the next number, which is i, it's still in the range of n equals three, um, a bracket i, or bracket one, um, I might have just said i, I don't know what I just said, but a bracket one equals zero times four again, so there's going to be four zeros in the second row, but again, basically it's indexing um, the number one. Um, and it's going to go all the way until it hits the end of this range. So technically it's not going to do three and I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to show this to you in a second. So let's just go ahead and run this. Third video. All right, so here you can see that there's a matrix with three rows and each row has four columns. So I'm going to show you how this indexing is working a little better. So let's say, um, let's make this 0 plus i. So that's an equals, plus i. So basically, um, when this for loop starts, it's going to go a 0 equals 0 plus 0 times 4. Then it's going to go a 1 equals 0 plus 1 times 4. Then it's going to go a2 equals 0 plus 2 times 4. And then it's going to stop because um, 
that's all within the range. And that's just how Python works again. Um, so let's go ahead and run that. So here you see what I um, just explained. It starts off as zeros, then it adds one, then it adds two. And that just kind of demonstrates like how the indexing is working in this. Um, and I also want to explain that this range needs to be um, either less than or the same number of rows that we created within this matrix. If you, um, for example, tried to uh, create, if you put four here, for example, um, it's just going to come up with an error because we don't have four rows in this, um, we don't have four rows in this matrix, so it's not going to know what to do when it gets to the fourth row. Um, so, but you can say, um, you could say two, and basically it's just not going to do this calculation for um, our third row because it's going to be stopping at one, um, and it's not going to go to two, like I said, it, it only does under that last number. Um, so the third row is going to end up having just the zero that we started with. So I'm going to show you that. So yeah, it does the calculation for the first row, or for zero. It does the calculation for one, and then since two is not technically within our range, um, it stops there, but it keeps that zero. It doesn't get rid of it. Um, yeah, so that's what, how you create a dynamic matrix. Um, so yeah, next we are going to talk about indexing. Let's go ahead and just say indexing a matrix or list. So I'm going to use the same example that I used in the video before with my sisters and grades. Um, so for example, let's say um, we're just going to call this grades. And I'm also going to um, create the first row. I'm going to um, just list out what each column is. So name or let's put let's put student and let's say each class or each subject science math English history bracket and we can't forget that outer bracket in our matrix comma um, this is gonna be my row These are random numbers. And let's just do one more row so this doesn't get too um, complex. Maddie. All right, outer bracket. Let's make this a little bigger so you can see. So let's say we want to grab my, or we want to uh, access my math grade. We are going to say, let's flip to my notes page. We are going to say print, and you need to specify first the name of the matrix. So we say grades bracket, and what did we say? We said my math grade. Um, so that's going to be the second row and that's going to be the third column so again for the second row we're not saying two we're saying um, we're saying one it's just going to be one less than the actual row number so um, we're going to do bracket one and then we're going to do bracket two because it's the third column again this can get kind of confusing but um, it gets easier as the more you practice. So let's say we want to print just the first row. We're going to do zero. And you don't need anything after that because we're only talking about the row. Um, and then let's say we want, let's say row three, column one. We're going to do grades two, zero because it's column one. So let's, uh, I'm just going to put that this should print Maddie 
this should print um, first row, and then this should print Kaylee's math grade. Um, I'm also going to show you what happens um, when you try to access something that is outside of the range of our matrix. Basically, it's just going to come up with an error. Um, so let's say print grades 3, because um, we do not have a fourth row. And let's say 3. Um, and then let's also do one more example. Print grades and this is going to print um, rows 1 and 2 and again this can be confusing too since it is the number 2 so you would think that it would uh, go all the way like it would print the whole matrix but it's just going to go 0, 1 and then stop. Alright so let's go ahead and run that. Yeah, so here we go. We had, uh, do we print? Oh, that's from the part before, sorry. Just look at this part right now. Um, or just look at this part. So it printed my math grade, 75. Um, and then it went ahead and it, whoo, whoops. It went ahead and printed the first row. And it also printed Maddie, like we said. And um, then it, Here's the error that it'll come up with if you try to access something out of the range. It's just going to say index error list index out of range. Um, so let's just comment that out so that we can see the last part. Again, ignore this because we already talked about that. So uh, the last thing it did is it printed the first row and the second row.